When the German army encountered the Soviet T-34s in 1941, it was obvious that a new heavy tank was needed. Ultimately, this resulted in a specification for a 45-ton tank with an 88mm gun, heavy armor and speed. The Porsche firm began working on this new tank design but encountered serious complications. On the other hand, the Henschel firm then began working on its own model under the direction of Dr. Erwin Aders, drawing from its previous work on heavy tank designs. The Porsche and Henschel tanks were put through trials and in spite of Dr. Ferdinand Porsche's friendship with Hitler, the Henschel tank won. Production was ordered to start in August of 1942. It began slowly at a rate of 25 tanks per month and peaked in April of 1944 at a rate of 104 per month. It took 300,000 man hours to build one Tiger tank, almost twice as much time as a Panther required. Handshell and Sun or Handshell und Sohn was a German company located in Kassel and founded in 1810. In 1848 the company began manufacturing locomotives. The factory became the largest locomotive manufacturer in Germany by the 20th century. By the time of the Second World War the company was producing locomotives, tanks, diesel engines, trucks, airplanes and artillery pieces. The tanks it manufactured included Panzer I, II, III, as well as the Tiger I and Tiger II. Henschel was comprised of three general engineering works in and around Kassel. Werk I was devoted to locomotive assembly and gun production. Werk II consisted of a boiler and other locomotive component shops, and Werk III was primarily devoted to tank assembly and component manufacture. Werk 3 was situated on both sides of a railway line running north to south. The main storage area for tank components was also on the left side of the track, including sheds that held tiger hulls and turrets. On the right side of the track there were four main shops numbered 1, 2, 3 and 5. Tiger manufacturing took place in shops 3 and 5. The factory employed a total of 8000 workers for tank production. They work in two 12-hour shifts and the night shift was said to have only 50% of the output of the day shift. A manufacturing process known as the TACT system was used in the assembly shops. This system relies on a timed rhythm for each step in the manufacturing process and there were nine steps or takte used in manufacturing the Tiger I. In factory photos you will often see signs on the shop walls denoting which step is being performed in that location such as takt 1 or takt 8. Each step took six hours. The total time to complete a Tiger tank, including the various machining processes, was estimated to be 14 days. An average of 18 to 22 tanks were carried at any one time in the hull assembly line and approximately 10 tanks were carried in the final assembly line. The first four steps revolved around hull machining and preparation. Henschel did not have the capability to weld or bend the massive heavy armor plates used in the Tiger and actually received the row hulls and turrets from other companies. The row hulls were manufactured by Krupp. These hull processing steps all took place in Shop 3. Step 1 in manufacturing a Tiger involved receiving the row hulls by rail. They arrived as a welded unit with the holes only roughly bored for things such as suspension arms, final drives, MG mount, 
etc etc simply unloading and moving these massive armor units was a major task in itself in step two the hull was precisely aligned on the rigid concrete bed then the holes in the hull sides for the suspension arms were finish board the hull was then transported to the four spindle borer which finished the holes for the final drives and idler arms in step 3. For the next step, step 4, the hull was transported to a vertical lath and again had to be precisely aligned for machining of the turret trace on the top plate. At the same time the whole sides were milled to receive the final drive casings. At this point hull machining was complete and the hull was transported to shop 5 finishing line. In step 5 many items were fitted such as suspension assemblies, the engine and transmission and various internal equipment. At this point step 6 began and the tiger was painted but only the lower hull and sides. Then it was on to step 7 in which the tiger was taken on a test drive. Any problems during the automotive tests were noted and repaired before the Tiger went on to step 8. In this step the final equipment fitting took place and most notable of which was the attachment of the turret to the hull. Step 9 consisted of the final painting of the Tiger and later in the war the application of the Zimmerit anti-magnetic coating. Henschel did not apply camouflage paint jobs at the factory. At this point the completed Tiger was ready for delivery. During the war the city of Kassel was bombed 40 times by the Allies. This disrupted Tiger production, most notably in late 1943, when during the night of October the 22nd, the Royal Air Force dropped 1,800 tons of bombs, causing severe damage at the Henschel facilities, as well as killing or injuring a good portion of its workforce. Yet, production continued right up until the end. The US Third Army began the battle to capture Kassel on the 1st of April 1945, and as they approached, the Henschel factory still completed works on 13 Tiger tanks. Three days later, at noon on the 4th of April 1945, the city was surrendered and Henschel Tiger production was forever ended. <laughs>